Turn your Bibles, we're going to be in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 27. Matthew 27. And as you're turning there, the minister and his family were given a pie, which uh, proved to be inedible and had to be discarded in the garbage. It was the minister's task to write a thank you card. His problem? How to be truthful and tactful at the same time. So he wrote, Dear Mrs. Jones, thank you for being so kind and thoughtful. You can be assured that a pie like yours never lasts long in our house. Amen. This morning I want to talk about the crown of thorns. Last week we considered the cup that caused Jesus so much agony and so much dread to drink in. That cup full of every disgusting and vile sin of all mankind that Jesus had to drink down all alone for you and for me. So this morning, let's pick up in Matthew chapter 27. Skip down to verse 26. Then he released Barabbas to them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. When they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him in the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. So this morning I I really want us to, to look deep into this crown of thorns and see its rich spiritual message that we can that we can glean from God's word this morning. And the first thing I want us to see, I want us to consider the crown and its symbolism. The crown and symbolism. You know, there's no doubt as as we read this scripture, in one sense, this was really just a a morbid idea from the twisted mind and sinful heart of a Roman soldier. But as as we dig deeper and we peel back the surface, we unveil a a much deeper spiritual symbolism. But this symbolism comes from the loving heart and the almighty mind of God. First thing I want us to see is that this crown, this crown of thorns, is symbolic of sin. We need to understand when we see and we read about the crown of thorns, we need to understand that it represents sin. Sin that we you and I, our sins that we are guilty of. Every sin that we've ever committed, every sin that we're yet to commit, that crown of thorns represent those sins. When God created Adam and Eve, and he, he, he created Adam and he, he planted him in the Garden of Eden, we need to understand that in the Garden there were no thorns whatsoever. Amen? Amen? perfect garden. No thorns, no weeds. Roses bloomed without thorns. If Adam decided he he wanted some uh, raspberries or blackberries, he'd go over to the blackberry bush and just pick away, not worried about one single thorn. No thorns in the blackberry bushes either. The problem was when Adam disobeyed God, and he rebelled, and he sinned. God had to judge that sin. We, we skip back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Then to Adam God said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it. All the days of your life, both thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of every 
field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. Thorns were not part of God's original creation. They were a direct result of what? Of sin. So when we read about thorns, it's symbolic. It represents sin in God's word. They are a sign of sin's curse upon all mankind. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 8. If it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. So God very clearly explains to us that, that thorns and briars, they represent sin. And Jesus wore that crown. And he endured those thorns because he was bearing our sins. Amen? We need to understand that. So those thorns, in that crown that those Roman soldiers just jammed on the head of Christ, they represent every hardship, they represent every heartache, they represent every sorrow, they represent every single death, all that come as a result of sin. All the hardships and all the trials that we go through, we need to understand that they are the result of sin. I see people today grieving and their hearts are broken. They lose a loved one. It was the first thing you want to say is, why did God let this happen? We need to understand. It's a result of sin. Amen? God didn't take that person away from us. God's original plan, Adam, was to live forever. It was sin that brought forth death and sorrow and heartache and all these bad things that we suffer. No matter how great things may be today for you. Maybe you're, you're going through a great time. We need to understand that in the flesh, there are thorns in it. And eventually those thorns, somehow, some way, they're going to stick us. Amen? We just need to understand that reality. We all experience sickness. We all experience pain. We all experience heartache. The question is why? Because sin has cursed all creation. Amen? All creation. Not just mankind, but all creation. Romans chapter 8, verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. There is no doubt we have seen a year, haven't we? Brother John referenced that this morning. It's been a year since COVID-19 broke out, a pandemic worldwide. And we've seen a year of just massive suffering and heartache and death, haven't we? But listen, every time that we see a crowded hospital, an overcrowded hospital, every time that we see an overflowing jail, we need to understand that sin calls that. Amen? Every heartache, everything that we suffer, we need to understand it's the result of sin, and the thorn is the emblem of that sin. On the way to Calvary, Jesus was crowned with thorns. And He wore that crown because He bore our sins. So the first thing we understand is that thorns represent sin. Secondly, thorns also represent suffering. They're symbolic of suffering. The Bible tells us that those soldiers jammed those thorns into Jesus' head. They took a reed, they took a club... And they hit Jesus over the head and on those thorns to the point that those thorns hit his skull. 
those throughout history that have painted pictures of Christ with the crown of thorns on his head and nailed to the cross, they've been extremely kind for what, tr what Christ truly looked like. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, verse, or chapter 52, verse 14, says, So His, talking about Christ, His visage, His appearance, was marred more than any other man. Now, I want you to think about that. Think about how many horrible things have happened to man over time. And the Bible says here that Christ's visage, his appearance was marred more than any other man, and his form more than the sons of men. Skipping down to Isaiah 53, 4. Surely he has borne our griefs, and he has carried our sorrows. The unimaginable suffering that Christ endured because of us. Because of our sins. So many walk around ashamed to talk about Christ. Afraid of, of what others might, might say about them or think about them for following Christ. But I don't know how anyone could be ashamed of the one who bore that crown. And endured those thorns. For us. He wore our crown. He bore our curse. He endured our hell. He paid the cost, the penalty for our sins. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but praise God, being made alive by the Spirit. So those thorns, they represent sin, they represent suffering. Next I want us to consider the crown and scorn. In Matthew 27, our original text, verse 29, when they had a had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they, they bowed the knee before him, and they mocked him. Why did they mock him? Probably read that piece of scripture many, many times, and not really considered the why. Why did they, why did they mock Christ? It's important for us to truly understand the reason behind it. And the reason is because of their rebellious hearts. Simply out of rebellion. They were ridiculing, they were rebelling Christ. They were rebelling against His right to rule over them. We need to understand that. And as we read, they didn't put a purple robe on Christ, did they? The Bible tells us they put a scarlet robe on Christ. Purple represents authority. It re represents kingship. But they didn't put a purple robe on Christ. They put a scarlet robe. And scarlet represents what? Sin. That's right. Scarlet represents sin. And you'll also notice here in our, in our scripture. They didn't put a diadem on his head either, did they? A diadem representing authority. Instead, they, they twisted that crown of thorns. And they jammed that crown of thorns into his skull. And they spat upon him. And they punched him in his face. And they mocked him. You see, the root of sin isn't doing wrong. It's not failing to do what we ought to do. The root of sin is truly rebellion. It's a rebellious heart against the one who is true in authority. Amen? That's what we need to understand. The root of sin is rebellion against God. It's refusing to bow the knee and acknowledging that Jesus is our rightful king, the rightful ruler over, over our life, over every decision that we make. 
He is our rightful king. Shaking a clenched fist in the face of God. Psalm chapter 2. You see a great picture here. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. We need to understand that this psalm is talking about Christ and His authority over us. What this is saying is that those, the the rulers, the kings of the earth, all the people of the nations are crying out and they're saying in their rebellion, uh, we don't want Jesus to rule over us. That's what this, these verses are saying. Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. We don't want Him to rule over us. When Jesus took on human flesh, He came into the world of Roman government a world of Greek culture, and a world of Hebrew religion. And every single one of them rejected him and crowned him with thorns. Every single one. And you know what? We are doing the exact same thing today. You know, we look back and we read the scripture and we, you know, it breaks our heart to see what Christ went through. But just look around. Look around in our own community. Look around even in the churches in our nation. And we're doing the exact same thing to Christ. We've kicked him out of our government. We've kicked him out of our schools. We're kicking him out of our homes. We've embraced humanism and anarchy in our universities. And we've abandoned the truth of God's holy word. As I said, even in many churches, they refuse to bow the knee to Christ. It's hard to believe, but it's true. So many have become nothing but a glorified social club. With a motivational speaker in the pulpit. Instead of someone who's ready to stand on the word of God and preach it. And declare it. We stagger from crisis to crisis and we slam the door on the only one that can unravel the whole mess that we're going through. Amen. We need to remember it was the religious that crucified Christ. The religious. They refused to bow the knee to Him. But the bottom line is that we all must choose. Every single human being must choose. We either bow the knee or we crown Him with thorns. That's our choice. Third point I want us to look at this morning. I want us to consider the crown... And salvation. Let's not lose sight of a critical truth. None of these things that we read in Scripture about what Christ endured happened by chance. Amen? None of them. Jesus wore that crown of thorns for a reason. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he, the Father, made him the Son, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. How did Christ become sin for us? Remember that cup last week we talked about that he drank down the cup of agony? That was filled with my sins, your sins, and all the sins of mankind. 
And when Christ drank it in, He became sin for us. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. You need to understand it was a, it was a spiritual object lesson. My crown of thorns... My sins, your sins, were put on the head of Christ as He bore our punishment. Amen? We need to understand that object lesson in that, in that crown of thorns. God is holy. He's completely righteous. And because of that, because of who He is, sin has to be dealt with. No sin can ever go unpunished. Not mine, not yours, not anybody's. No sin can ever go unpunished. But the question is, who's going to bear that punishment? That's the most important question. For all mankind through all eternity, our sin will either be pardoned in Jesus Christ or punished in hell. There's no in-between, there's no gray, there's no other way, there's no other course. Our sins are either going to be pardoned in Jesus Christ if He is our Lord and Savior, or they're going to be punished. We will bear our own punishment in the eternal lake of fire. That's the only two options. But they will never be overlooked or forgotten. Amen? So we read here that Jesus went to Calvary crowned with our sins. Calvary, Golgotha, Mount Moriah. It's all the same place. You may not know that or, or, or uh, may not have understood that. Mount Moriah, that may sound familiar to you in the book of Genesis. It's the same spot that God spared Abraham from sacrificing his son, Isaac. On Mount Moriah, he told Abraham, he said, I will provide myself a lamb. And God provided Abraham a lamb right there on the top of Mount Moriah, Calvary, Golgotha. A beautiful picture of God's perfect Lamb, Jesus Christ. You know, we read that scripture in Genesis and it reads a little funny. God said, I will provide myself a Lamb. There's not a grammatical error there. There's not an error in translation. God provided Himself as a Lamb. The perfect Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, who sacrificed Himself on the top of that same mount for you and for me. What a beautiful picture. It is finished. It is done. It is paid in full. Thanks to Christ. Give Him praise this morning. Last thing I want us to consider. I want us to consider that crown and sovereignty. Symbolic of sin. It was symbolic of suffering. It was symbolic of salvation. It's also symbolic of sovereignty. Listen, Jesus did not die as a helpless victim or because... You know, things just got out of control with the Romans and the, and the Hebrews and the religious. All things happened just as God had planned it to. Acts chapter 4, verse 27. Listen to what God said. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, 
with the Gentiles and the people of Israel. They were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Did you catch that? God's plan of salvation was determined before time even began. Christ's sovereignty. He didn't die as a helpless victim. Jesus wore that crown of thorns as the willing sovereign. Almighty God in the flesh. He was the one who ordained this plan of salvation before the earth was even formed. I want you to think about crowns. No doubt you've seen many images of crowns before. Crowns have always been a symbol of authority. Some of the most well-known crowns throughout history, Charlemagne. Charlemagne wore an eight-sided crown that was embedded with rubies and emeralds and diamonds. Priceless. Then we think of Richard the Lionhearted. He wore a crown so heavy that it took two of his servants to keep his head steady. He looked like a bobblehead, if not. Then probably the, the crowns that we're most familiar with, the king and queen of England. They both have separate crowns, and each of their crowns individually are valued at well over a million dollars a piece. But then there was Christ. In glory, he wears a crown of righteousness, but on earth. Here amongst us, he wore a crown of thorns. A crown of my sins, a crown of your sins. And its rubies were drops of his precious blood. More valuable than any other crown ever worn in history. And that, my friends, is pure, enduring unconditional love.